We're here with Andy Shin. He's CTO of GOAT, which is a e-commerce site that specializes in sneakers. Uh, it's basically a marketplace. So tell me about GOAT, what the plan is, and um, what the value prop is. So GOAT is the world's largest sneaker marketplace. Um, we are the premier location for buying and selling authentic sneakers. Uh, we have currently 8 million users on our platform. Um, and we employ 400 people. Uh, we've grown from 100 to 400 employees over the last year. Um, and we currently have half a million sneakers that you can purchase. Our value proposition um, really stems from providing a trusted place where people can find sneakers online. Uh, Nike is the world's most uh, counterfeited sneaker. Um, if you go online, there's a coin flips chance that the shoe you're looking at is fake. And what our service provides um, is uh, trust and authenticity. Uh, we, are, uh, we pioneered the ship to verify model, which is essentially the, um, what that means is that uh, um, on, our, on our platform, our marketplace, buyers list, uh, I'm sorry, sellers list sneakers for sale. Um, buyers find that sneaker at the right price and they purchase it. And the experience that this, the buyer has is, is just like any other e-commerce website. They have no idea who's selling that sneaker to them. But we're in the middle. And what we provide is safety. And um, when that shoe is purchased, the seller ships it to us to verify. And we verify that product the same day um, using our sophisticated machine learning, computer vision, and our industry knowledge. Um, and we release the funds to the seller. And then we ship that product to the buyer to, to purchase. So, so how does the machine learning verify whether it's a legit, a legit shoe? Like, is there a VIN number like there is for a vehicle, or, or how does that work? We use computer vision. We use a lot of different um, uh, heuristics and data points uh, to verify whether the shoe is authentic or not. We see the most sneakers um, in the world, and we are the leader in data collection. Around, around sneakers. So every shoe that comes in, we're collecting all the data points for it. So we actually, um, we, we, know what, we know what fakes look like and we know what real shoes look like. And there's a lot of it and every, every single sneaker has multiple data points that um, we focus on and that's kind of our, our secret sauce. Okay, so you're looking, what are you looking for specifically as far, is it like a miss, a stitch that's a little off or, or exactly how does, how do the machines pick up what, what, it, how granular does it get? Sure, sure. Uh, we, um, we basically take a lot of different physical attributes, anything that the human can see um, or smell or touch, we try to replicate that to a, a digital representation of it, right? So for, for your eyes, for your vision, it's photos, right? For your smell, we use certain types of uh, uh, instruments to cap, um, and for the feel, we use certain different uh, proprietary tools to, to understand the supplement, suppleness of the sole, um, the hardness of certain rubbers. So we're looking at all different characteristics of the product um, to determine whether or not it's authentic or not. Now, how did you, you work with AWS and you use their machine learning technology? What do you, how did you choose to figure out what, what to develop yourself? Like, how did you meld their expertise with yours, and, and how does that, how, how those algorithms plug and play together? Uh, we, we use, a, most of our uh, machine learning is proprietary. We use AWS's compute and their, their cloud infrastructure to run our algorithms. Um, and we process, um, all of our data through different machine learning algorithms to determine the authenticity of products. Um, also what we do for, um, we also leverage machine learning in our business. So we control the whole process from the moment that a buyer wants a product to the moment they receive it. We control the whole supply chain. And so what that enables us to do is um, we leverage machine learning through this process to determine, to determine the best way to get um, uh, product to a customer and to have the best experience. 
So what that really means is we use machine learning during our, um, to optimize our warehouse management. Um, so when products come into our facility, um, we know, um, typically, we know exactly um, who, who, who should get that product first. And uh, we, um, we optimize the experience for, for, for customers so they have a good experience. Could you, could you do this machine learning and, and this whole process without the cloud? Or I guess what was the value what was the value in the cloud for you when it came to building the business? Well, typically, if you look at back uh, before the cloud, companies would have to make very, very, very large investments in, in, in infrastructure and staff, right? So would I have to build a, um, a center where I, ha I would, that would house, house my, my servers and I'd have to hire people to run those servers, right? Um, a very large investment for, for companies to make. Um, today with, with cloud computing, um, with the click of a button, I'm able to boot up a server and focus not on um, the infrastructure, the technology pieces with running these servers, but focus, uh, I can focus on building a great customer experience. And so what cloud computing really allows us to do is um, focus on building value, focus on building something for, for our customers, um, and in our case, focus on removing friction between buyers and sellers um, when they want to buy sneakers. How, how large is your data science team out of those 400 employees? I guess give me yeah, data, data science and then give me the developer team and, and sort of how that breaks down. So our, our team is, has, has quadrupled in the last year. We've gone from 100 employees in 2060 to 400 employees today. Um, of the 400 employees, um, the engineering uh, team is 60, 60 people, and our data science team is seven, which includes um, data science uh, and data engineering. Um, you recently got into physical retailing. Um, how does that play in with machine learning and, and how, do you, how do you mix and meld you know, that, the back end process with, can you use any of the data science stuff in the front in the real world? Retail today is, 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 is evolving. So companies need to be innovative in order to um, meet the needs of our customers, right? So people's expectations for, for delivery of products, for pricing, for experience have gone up, um, and and that's been um, made evident by um, the Amazons and the Ubers. Um, our consumer, our consumers are expecting things immediately, right? So, how do retailers um, keep up with the expectations of our customers? And it's it's by innovation, right? And so, um, retailers today need to innovate and provide an experience that they're not going to get uh, online, and. Um, and that's what we're focusing on today and, uh, and really bringing in a, um, an experience uh, when well, we talk about machine learning. And so we're leveraging machine learning right now for merchandise, for example, right? So we know when a shoe is picked up in our store. And so if you, if you think about Flight Club, Flight Club is much like a Foot Locker in that there's a wall of shoes, right? Except we have 5,000 shoes that um, at, at a retail store in New York City or Los Angeles. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of stuff to merchandise, right? So how do we know what to put at eye level, right? How do we know what to put right when you walk in? How do you know um, what is the experience we want to have in the store to drive people through all of our merchandise? And we leverage machine learning. And um, we know, for example, how long someone's picked up a shoe. We know how long... Um, what they've done with it and how long and, and when they put it down. We also know um, which products have been requested, um, whether or not we had the size for it, how long it took for that customer to get that product and try it on. Um, so we leverage all these data points in order to create a great experience for our customers. Now, is that data aggregated by computer vision? Uh, no, we have sensors. Um, okay. I mean, today, uh, yeah, so we have sensors that determine whether a shoe's been picked up or not. Um, and again, that's bridging the gap from, uh, you know, 
how do you convert something physical into digital, right? And so in this, in this scenario, we're using sensors to figure that out. Yeah, that's a very interesting IoT play there. Um, so yeah. with that data, how often do you tweak your stores and merchandising to, um, you know, based on the data? Does that mean it's a monthly overhaul or, or I guess how do you, how do you iterate, you know, based on that sensor data? Uh, we have to capture enough data. So we iterate um, or we change our merchandising weekly. Um, it's a part of our, um, our weekly uh, refresh of all our products. So we're constantly changing. And as you know, um, uh, sneakers um, are, re are released on a weekly basis. So there are you know, sneaker drops that happen um, uh, several times a week, actually. And so in order to keep up with the demands and um, to understand our customer, we really leverage machine learning to determine um, how to merchandise um, our products. Uh, what's next on the horizon? What technologies are you looking at to enhance the experience, both online, offline? From our perspective, we've grown so much in a very short period of time. And that's really been made capable, um, made possible through um, by AWS. And AWS has allowed us to not only transform the way that we do computing and the way that we um, serve our customers online and offline, um, it's allowed us to reorganize our teams very, very quickly. And so a year ago, uh, we had um, 20 engineers. Today we have 60, right? And you know, we've tripled our, our engineering size um, and we've had to reorganize into pods. And these pods are essentially KPI driven, you know, they, they are key performance indicator driven pods that focus on certain aspects of our business. Um, I'll give you an example. So our customers um, have high expectations for when they get product. And so we have a pod focused on time of delivery. How do we get people product faster um, and close the gap between when they purchase and when they, when they actually receive the product, right? So that's a KPI driven pod that focuses on, on delivery. And what we really like to do is um, provide autonomy for these, for these teams. We enable them, we give them a KPI, and it's really up to these teams to figure out how they're going to shorten this, uh, to reach this, to reach this, um, uh, this milestone or this, to reach this metric. And um, what AWS has allowed us to do is to move to microservices away from our monolithic application um, and leverage any technology that serves the needs of the customer. So our backend, our backend stack is, um, is primarily Ruby, but we also use Go, we use Java. Um, our front end infrastructure is React based. Um, our iOS and Android are on Swift um, and um, Java. And so what, um, yeah, to answer your question, um, I forgot your question. <laughs> but, so, so if you found that, you know, this, this pod, this pod organization, is it basically, it's it best to have one team, one KPI? Or do you have a team that works on a set of KPIs? At our current scale, um, with 10 pods of six, with six engineers each, we give one KPI to each pod. Okay. But at the same time, we have to be careful because someone that uh, increases conversion rate, uh, for example, someone who increases um, the likelihood that someone's going to purchase may affect the lifetime value of that customer because they have a bad experience, for example. We close them one time, but are we going to close them multiple times, right? right. So we do have cross-cutting um, uh, view of all of our analytics. Over time, our, our team our team's going to transform, and the next uh, transformation is going to be focusing on different aspects of our business, such as um, buy side. And so we'll have a buy side, a sell side, and we'll also have an experience, right? So that means... Uh, customer support, fraud, uh, fulfillment. Um, and these pods will start to group together um, around certain aspects of our business, right? So the buy side, the buy side um, uh, would focus on um, sell-through rate or seller retention 
or shipping costs and things like that, where the, the, uh, the sell side of the equation would focus on, um, you know, the seller experience and fraud and different things like that. So um, the next progression is to group pods together towards a single goal. Does that mean the compute side of the house? Does that mean you're basically serverless at this point? Like, do you view, do you think in terms of functions instead of compute power yet? Uh, we, we are starting to. So we okay. have a small percentage of our, our compute is serverless. And that's mostly because we are Ruby, we're a Ruby shop. Mm -hmm. And so we are, um, uh, we we're actually switching to focus more on Go and the uh, parallel processing of Go and using serverless is something that we're currently working on. Okay. And so we will be switching over to being more serverless. Um, and uh, it's been mostly because of our limitations with our language. Yeah, I was just curious because it seems like the serverless setup about func business functions instead of compute lines up better with that pod structure you described. Makes Absolutely. A lot of so yeah, thanks for joining us. Great, thank you.